basically what we had on our hands when I joined was a college website for, you know, about 5 million college kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and by the way, it had engagement that no one had ever really seen. You had, you know, you had 5 million people on it, 6 million people on it, and half of them were coming back every day. Mm. And no one in, in, um, this is pre-smartphone. No one had seen engagement like that before. You didn't Mm. have services where people, half the users came back every day. Maybe once a month, half of the users came back. So uh, it was clear that it was really engaging. It was clear that it could be bigger in that, you know, this seemed like a service that other people could use. Look, they had done it with Friendster. They had done it with with MySpace. Mm -hmm. What Facebook figured out was, the biggest breakthrough of Facebook, in addition to building a terrific product, was that they got lucky by virtue of starting in college and drafting off of the .edu email sign-up process. Because by virtue of drafting off of the, you know, everybody had to have a .edu email to sign up. Yeah. And so the first 10 million people that signed up for Facebook were who they said they were Hmm. because there was no alternative. You couldn't create a fake account. Mm. because wherever you went to school had a clearinghouse for one person gets one email address and it's consistent with what their real name is. Right. And Facebook drafted off all of that. So verifiable and authentic identity was inherent in the first 10 million users. And I think that norm just persisted as the service grew. That's more of an aside about why Facebook, in my opinion, won over the other services and became so dominant. And then look, there were very good people there and they executed very well and they continued to make the product, one word for it is better, another word for it is addictive, but they just kept adding feature after feature after feature that added utility to people's life for sure, but also, and I don't think this was the express intent of me or the people there, but also these features triggered and and played on our base instincts, right? I mean, status updates and photo tagging and all of that, that plays on vanity and voyeurism and popularity and comparison. Yeah. So that was certainly the, the, the playbook there. When I showed up in 2006, my mandate was as the director of monetization was, Hey, figure out how we're going to make, a sustainable business here. Mm-hmm. So we tried a bunch of things and advertising was far and away the most uh, straightforward. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.